Hi, you're back with uh, Andrew. We're doing some statistics homework tonight. Uh, working on uh, fre frequency distributions. And the next one I have to do is the cumulative relative frequency distribution. Uh, my homework has uh, 10 different data points in the problem. Uh, so let's get started. I use a, an online tool called cram101.com uh, to solve the statistics program problems. Uh, in part because there's already formatted, it's laid out, you don't have to mess with, with spreadsheets. So here's CRAM 101, and this is the stats lab menu. Uh, we'll go down, select cumulative relative frequency distribution. And the first thing they ask us is the number of data points, and that's going to be 10. And then the next thing we do is put in our values. So let's start. The uh, first one is 50. Then 44, 60, 51, 55, 88, 84, 80, 3, and 21. Check out our table real quick. Make sure you make any errors. Okay, good. Cram does let you come back if you want to and, and put in like random data if you want to just keep trying different problems and so forth. It's a great way to practice. Or they also have fixed data, which is an example they've pre-prepared for you. Anyway, let's go through the homework. So the first step is to order the data numerically. So we'll click that. So we have a new table now, which takes the data that we put in up there and sorts it from lowest to highest values. Um, great. And then the number of intervals. This is uh, an arbitrary level. It basically says we can take the amount of information that we have, reduce it to make it more meaningful. Uh, so we're going to reduce our 10 scores to a 5. And again, that's an arbitrary value. You can kind of pick whatever you want. So the upper limit of our distribution is 88. And the lower limit of the distribution is 3. And that gives us a range of 85, which is the 88 minus 3. To get to the interval size, we take the 85 divided by the number of intervals that we selected and then round it up. So we have an interval size or an interval width of 18. And here are our intervals. The lower limit, lower limit and upper limit of the intervals have been reduced by 0.5 so that all scores will fit into one bucket and only one bucket. You want to make sure there's no overlaps. So the next thing we need to do is get the frequencies. So the frequency is going to be the number of scores that we have that will fit into each interval. So from 2.5 to 20.5, we have only one score. So we can see in our table, we have the value of one. So you proceed like that through each interval. Uh, in our case, we have one, one, four, one, three. Uh, and that gets us our frequency table. The next thing we're going to do is get the relative frequency. The relative frequency is the frequency of the interval relative to the number of scores in the distribution. So our frequency here is one, and our number of scores in this, in this distribution is 10. So relative frequency is 0.1 or 10%. And summary to the second level and so forth. And in the third interval, we have four. So we have basically 40% of our data falls into the, the third bucket. Okay, once you've determined the relative frequencies, then it's a fairly easy task then to get the cumulative relative frequency. Cumulative relative frequency is basically the relative frequency of that interval plus the cumulative relative frequency below that interval. Since this is the first interval, there isn't anything below it. So our cumulative relative frequency will be identical to the relative frequency. Going to the second interval, we have in that particular interval, 10% uh, uh, of our data falls in the second interval and 10% of the data falls below it. So we have a total of 20% in the second interval. And you proceed like that until you've accounted for all the data, which will then get you a value of one at the very, at the very end. Uh, and now we want to plot that data. Uh, you can choose a histogram. Cram is really easy at uh, plotting. You don't have to format anything. It's already done for you. Uh, a lot of people like myself prefer the polygon when it comes to cumulative values. So here's the uh, cumulative relative frequency distribution. All right, thank you.